Hello baseball fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here at BlowerPros.com to bring you episode 2 of my DFS MLB video series. Today we're going to be looking at hitting statistics in episode 1. You can go back and check that out. We talked about pitching statistics. Before we get started today, if you're not a RotorPros member yet, make sure to get over to RotorPros.com. Go to the top of the page, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and get your free trial to come in and check out all that we, that we offer. Um, and then we've got weekly, monthly, and yearly subscriptions after that. What we do cover, we have, uh, this is our, our members only chat that uh, our subscribers get access to. Um, we have a ton of different channels on here for the different sports that we cover. We cover MLB, NHL, PGA, NASCAR, soccer, pretty much any DFS sport that's out there. We're here to help you out with one-on-one -on -one coaching, members only uh, articles, premium articles, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, that sort of thing. So get over to RotorPros.com. Pretty sure you're not going to be disappointed. Uh, stick with us for the long run. We're going to be there to help you out. With that, let's jump into episode two of the DFS MLB video series. So today we're going to be talking about hitting statistics, and this is just a look at my sheet. I have individual hitter tabs down here, as you can see, um, if you're familiar with my sheet. ton of statistics up here. I want to teach you what statistics I'm using, what they mean, and why I insert them into my sheet and look at them on a daily basis when looking at my research. So this is kind of what it looks like. Um, you can go back and check out how I use my sheet in uh, the video as well on the YouTube channel. You'll find that right near the top of the page when you go to our uh, YouTube channel. But for today, let's go over some hidden statistics. So starting off, I do use Fangraphs. You can see the tabs up here. We're going to cover some stuff and look at some examples. Um, it, as we after we go through each stat and what it means but uh, so these stats are the ones I look at a lot from from fan graphs average that's pretty self-explanatory old-school stat um, it's pretty much hits per uh, plate appearance and we've got on base percentage which also adds walks and hit by pitch into that number to give you a better measure of how often a player is getting on base or rather not getting out which is kinda of what we're looking for as a player um, we're getting fantasy points pretty much every time they're not getting out so Slugging percentage is just your total bases per bat. Now, average on base percentage and slugging percentage, you're going to hear me talk about this a lot, a uh, player's slash line. Um, so that's going to be their average followed by on base percentage and slugging percentage. Um, just a quick, easy way to put all those things together. Now, um, BABIP I have next on the list here, but I'm going to jump over it here just for a second. Putting those three stats together that we just talked about, average on base percentage and slugging percentage, I love using WOBA which is weighted on base percentage and it really combines all three of those stats into one measurable stat and it, it meant what it's doing is measuring a hitter's overall offensive value and giving different weights to walks, singles, doubles, triples, home runs because each one is a little more important and gives a little more value um, especially when looking at fantasy than the other singles better than a walk, doubles better than a single, triples better than a double, and home runs better than a triple um, and so on so it does combine the aspects of average on base percentage and slugging percentage league average is around 320 you're getting into the elite hitters when you start looking in that 370 plus range so keep that in mind. And then we'll go back up here to BABIP. I'm going to hear that quite a bit as well. That's batting average of balls in play. So we can use this tool to really, what I use it for is to help identify players who are maybe over or under underperforming. And I compare that to their average. So if you have a player that's maybe hitting 380 to start the year, but his BABIP is up, say, in that 350, 360 range, um, but his career averages are kind of sitting around that 300, 297, that kind of area. We kind of feel like his, he's going to regress back to that career mean, um, in which case his average is probably going to drop as well. And it kind of gives a little bit of the why is he hitting so well right now. Um, because when he's putting a ball in play, it's either, you know, finding a hole, finding a gap, and it's really missing the, the defenders that are out there. So BABIP's a tool we can use just to kind of analyze overperforming or underperforming players. So going down, uh, next up we got uh, WRC Plus, which is a weighted runs created plus. It's very similar to WOBA in that it, it weighs walks, singles, doubles, home runs, triples. It, it weighs all that differently and puts more weight on, on, this, on those stats, um, depending on what they are. But what makes it a little bit different is it also accounts for park factor. Um, which kind of brings all the players together because we know some players, um, you look at the Colorado Rockies, they play 82 games in Coors Field, which is a really good hitter's park. 
versus say the Houston Astros who are in one of the best pitchers parks um, as well. So it just kind of gives you a league average when looking at that. And then it gives it a scale of 100. So league average is right around 100. So if you see a team or a player that is above that 100 mark, that for each point that is a percentage point better than league average. So for example, player X has a WRC plus of 125. That means he's 25% better at creating runs than league average. Um, it's pretty much how we look at that. And then again, if, if say, player X had a WRC plus of 80, he is 20% less than league average when creating runs. So moving on, we've got K and walk percentage, pretty standard there. The average number, uh, K percentage, is about 20% uh, lead. You're looking at that sub-12% range. And then walk percentage average is about 8%. Um, elite is in the 12% and greater range when looking at walks. Now, those league averages do vary a bit from year to year, but this is just a general uh, average when looking at the numbers. So then going down, getting a little more advanced with the stats, we're looking at ISO, just isolated power. Um, it pretty much tells you um, extra base hits per at bat when looking at those players. Helps you find players who do hit more extra base hits than singles. Um, average doesn't really tell us that. Um, either does on base percentage in in when looking at those stats. So ISO really helps us to distinguish players who are hitting for extra base hits, which are obviously going to give us more fantasy points than players that are just hitting singles, which for the most part are just, you know, if they're not scoring runs or stealing bases after those singles, it's not a lot of points that we're getting there. So it can help us target the players that we're looking for either for cash or GPP formats. So then we've got line drive, ground ball, fly ball percentage. Um, pretty self-explanatory. I talked about that a little bit in the in the pitcher's video. Um, line drives produce the most hits over ground balls and fly balls. Um, ground balls more than fly balls. And then for production-wise, fly balls, obviously, when you get fly balls, they're going to create more because you've got home runs in there. Um, and when fly balls fall in for hits, they're going to turn into doubles, triples. Uh, so fly ball percentage is good for production. But when looking for consistency, line drive percentage is definitely what we're looking for. Average is about 21%. Ground ball percentage is about 44%. And fly ball percentage is about 35%. And then we'll jump over to MLB uh, Savant, uh, which is their stat cast site tracks all that stuff and we're going to look at some stats there. Exit velocity, we talked about that as well in the pitching. That's just the speed the ball comes off the bat. Um, I look at it as an average exit velocity for the season as well as I also look at the average exit velocity on fly balls and line drives because they do split that out here. This is the average exit velocity of all batted balls for the batter and this is average exit velocity on just fly balls and line drives which we've already distinguished are a lot bring a lot more value to the hitter so I will look at both of those that's kind of the main two columns that I'm looking at when talking about exit velocity so then we've got a batted ball event we talked about that as well it's any ball that produces a result an out a hit an error so every fair ball is going to be a batted ball event foul balls that res result in an out or an error are also a batted ball event and that's just something um, you know just some terms that I'm going to be using quite a bit in my articles, videos, um, in chat, on Twitter. So I just wanted to make you familiar with that. And then we start looking at hard hit percentage. This is very good measure as well of how good a hitter. Um, we talked about it on the pitcher side, but we're going to, they want to be limited in the hard percentage, hard hit contact um, versus batters who we want to produce that hard contact. So hard hit percentage is a measure that any ball in play has a 95 plus mile an hour exit velocity and then gives you a percentage of that as well. And the reason we look at that, I went over this in the other video, but I'm going to do it one more time. We're going to go to Baseball Savant. We're going to go over to the search tab. And we're going to go down and we're going to look at hitters and we're going to sort by batting average and we're going to exit velocity here for our metric range. And we want that 95 miles an hour and we want to sort by teams sort league we want to see the league average so what we're looking for with this search is with we're asking for it to give us the league average on any ball that's in play that exceeds 95 plus miles an hour so we hit search we look at that we scroll down uh, 530 batting average right now that's 6738 results so far this year in 2019 and any ball that is comes off the bat at 95 plus miles an hour produces a batting average of 5, 530. So 53% of the time, um, 
with a 95 plus miles an hour exit velocity, that player is at least getting a single. Um, so that's that's def that's why they use that as their hard hit percentage, and then they turn that into a, a percentage over here as well. So Joey Gallo. So we're going to see some familiar names at the top of this list: Joey Gallo, Aaron Judge, Nelson Cruz. Um, and then we get into like Carlos Santana, Juan Moncada, young up and comer, Fran Mill Reyes. Now that's one I want to use an example with. He's sixth in the league, uh, minimum 25 batted ball events. So we're kind of getting rid of those guys that have only you know had one or two or three plate appearances. He's sixth in the league with an average exit velocity of 95 miles an hour, and 52% of the time his batted balls are 95 plus miles an hour. And the last thing we're going to talk about, we'll talk about barrels here in a second. Um, but he's very high in that category as well. Well, you'd think he'd be doing very well. You go over to Fangrass, and we'll start looking at his seasons here. We'll get rid of the minors. This is his second season in the league. He's only hitting 209. He hit 280 last year, only hitting 209. Really struggling. But he's hitting the ball very hard. So we start looking at the bow bit. It's only 174. So of all the balls that he puts in play, he's only has an average of 174 on those, which is really low um, whether we compare it to league average whether we compare it to his last year I mean it's a small sample size but he was a 345 bad bit last year it's probably more in somewhere in that 280 to 300 range that's a hundred points lower um, his bad bit sits right now so he's either finding you know hitting balls that are going and finding fielders um, pop-ups that sort of thing um, but I wouldn't say it would be a lot of pop-ups just because we're looking at this data over here on baseball savant and seeing a 95 plus mile hour exit velocity and 27 of his 52 batted ball events, 52% of the time are in that 95 plus mile an hour exit velocity range. So he is hitting the ball hard. So I, with that low BABIP and that exit velocity information that we just looked at, I would expect that average to definitely get back up, um, him to hit some strides, probably start seeing him in that 260 to 280 range again this season with an on-base percentage over 300. But again, um, that's just how we can use that data and use those stats to really answer the question, why is Fran Milray struggling this season? Why is his BABIP really low? Um, so he might be hitting a lot of hard line drives. We'll go look at that as well. You know, we talked about line drive percentage. So he's right there at league average line drive percentage. His ground balls are down, his fly balls are up. So he's hitting a lot of fly balls. They're not quite weather, you know, temperature's cold. I mean, um, he does play in San Diego, but it's a little bit cooler on um, playing on some of those games on the road. So... Either way, looking for some positive regression with Fran Mill Race, and that's just kind of how I use some of those stats to really go ahead and answer the questions of why when looking at a hitter. Is he overperforming? Is he underperforming? What can we expect from this hitter going forward? And that helps us in DFS as well as season-long fantasy when trying to predict what a player is going to do on a given day. Um, it's a lot harder on a given day versus, you know, over a larger sample size, but these are the stats that we can use to really help us hone in on um, our not just our strategy but you know our approach each and every day and what we're going to look at to help us build successful lineups in daily fantasy. So finally, I wanted to look at barrel. We talked about barrel, uh, something I'm going to be mentioning. You're going to hear a lot about as well. And a barrel is just a batted ball event that falls into a specific launch angle and exit velocity range that produces a 500 plus batting average and 1500 slugging percentage. Um, to best look at that, you know, we're looking at barrels per plate appearance percentage, and this is just a nice visual here. Um, as you see, as you can see, um, the barrel zone here, as the exit velocity goes up, the launch angle um, can can actually, I'll do it like this, can actually open up a little bit. The more exit velocity there is, the the more range of launch angle you can have to hit that barrel zone and that barrel zone is what we want our hitters to hit um, they're going to be very successful when they get the ball on the barrel and that's the reason why they're using barrel because that's just the way um, you know baseball the way the way that we're talking about it so over on baseball savant i'll go back to it here for a second and we'll go back to the leaderboards you can actually see over here this is barrels so in 32 Batted ball events, Gary Sanchez has had nine barrels, which is an 18.4 barrels per plate appearance percentage, which is really high. Obviously a small sample size with him. He was injured there for a bit, but we start looking at Joey Gallo, 44 batted ball events, 14 of them, or 32% of them, um, have been on the barrel, which is a 15.7 barrels per plate appearance percentage. 
So most of these guys that are going to average high in this exit velocity range are going to have that. As you can see, Carlos Santana isn't hitting a lot of barrels but has a high exit velocity. Um, would, would expect maybe a little bit of, of regression there. He's not going to get you... He's not going to get you those extra base hits as much. He's not going to get you those home runs, but he is hitting the ball hard, um, which is positive, probably more from a cash game perspective than an upside perspective. I'm wanting guys with a high barrels per plate appearance percentage for my upside for GPP formats, the guys you're looking for to hit home runs, multiple home runs in a game for you. So that pretty much covers all my stats um, for hitters. If you have any questions, make sure to head over to the Rotopros uh, community chat. I'm, I'm pretty much in there all day um, as well as leading up to lock in there for sure in the last hour giving uh, um, information that one-on-one -on -one coaching that I talked about as well as our skeleton lamps that come out about 30 minutes prior. It gives us uh, a look into our core plays. You can also comment in the video below or hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs9. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Like I said, there's a lot more videos coming down the line. We're going to start getting into some more strategy stuff with the MLB video series. Um, we've got uh, NASCARs at Talladega this week, so we will have a post-qualifying video on Saturday um, with my top picks there as well. And then uh, we get back into the PGA next week as well. Thanks for joining me. Let's go get some green screens. Good luck, everyone.